Uh, we have our vodcast on atomic theory. Um, our goal is our learning objectives. This is based on the Massachusetts curriculum frameworks. What they expect you guys to know uh, when you leave chemistry is the atomic structure and nuclear chemistry central concepts. Uh, atomic models are used to explain atoms and help understand the interaction of elements and compounds observed on the macroscopic scale, um, recognizing discoveries from Dalton, who we'll talk about today, as well as Thompson, Rutherford, and Bohr, who we'll talk about in a uh, future vodcast, and understanding how each discovery leads to uh, the modern theory. Uh, also, again, this is something we'll get to in a future vodcast describing Rutherford's Gold 4 experiment. So, uh, where did the atomic theory start? The, our best record of the start of the atomic theory comes from the 5th century BC uh, in the Greek philosopher Democritus. Uh, you may have heard about uh, Democritus, he's a pretty famous Greek philosopher. And as philosophers did, Democritus kind of pondered on the question, what is matter? What are things made up of? And in doing so, he proposed that all matter was made up of these tiny individual particles, which he called atomos. He was a thinker who came up with a, a great idea about what matter is. His idea of matter, in fact, stuck around for a long time and the atomic theory really didn't change for about 2300 years that's a long time uh, for there not to be changes now that doesn't mean that there wasn't any scientist scientists I should say that uh, didn't try to experiment with matter and and maybe come up with their own ideas on matter but uh, the our general you know accepted view on matter was uh, based off of Democritus's theory of these indivisible particles. Finally, um, in 1808, uh, a scientist by the name of John Dalton, uh, he was an experimenter, and that's sort of what was different between him and Democritus. He experimented with atoms rather than just theorize about atoms. And he did some sp experiments uh, based on the work of Antoine Lavoisier, who, if you remember from class, he came up with the idea of the law of conservation of mass, that matter can be neither created nor destroyed uh, in a chemical reaction, only recombined. And also uh, Joseph Proust's law of constant proportions, which states that if you have a particular sample of matter that all of that same type of matter will have the exact same proportions and, and I think we even described it by mass if we look at water water is two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen or by mass it's about uh, 11 percent hydrogen and 88 percent oxygen because those oxygen atoms are much larger than the hydrogen uh, as it states here that uh, Dalton studied atomic masses of different types of matter and again dealing with their relationship in substances uh, sort of carrying on the work of Joseph Proust and b basically all of his work came down to uh, an atomic theory that is the basis for really our understanding of chemistry and so we're going to look at the the different parts of his uh, theory in this particular podcast uh, first part is, you know, Dalton, so, you know, somewhat accepted Democritus's theory that all matter is made up of these tiny indivisible particles called atoms. We'll talk further in the fact that there are some some uh, faults to Dalton's atomic theory, but uh, just the fact that he was able to provide uh, the world with this idea of matter. And, and sort of bring it into um, an understandable concept. Uh, postulate number one of Dalton's theory is that all atom, atoms of a given element are the same. 
So if, again, if you're dealing with a hydrogen atom, all hydrogen atoms are the same. If you're dealing with an oxygen atom, all oxygen atoms are the same. Uh, number two, atoms of one element differ from other elements. So again, no two elements are alike. No two elements are alike. Number three, compounds are the combination of more than one element in fixed whole number ratios. So our favorite compound that we keep referring to is water. And again, water consists of two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen. Another example might be carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide consists of one part carbon to two parts oxygen. Okay, and they're always in these whole number ratios, and that was one of the things that Dalton uh, brought to our understanding. Number four, a chemical reaction involves the rearrangement of atoms. Okay, so it's a it, chemical reaction is only involving the rearrangement of atoms, and again, going back to Antoine Lavoisier's conservation of matter, atoms are neither created nor destroyed. Okay, they're only rearranged. And that is uh, going to be the end of our notes on atomic theory, or Dalton's atomic theory. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be dealing with the scientist Ernest Rutherford, as well as Niels Bohr and J.J. Thompson in class. So we'll be uh, taking some notes on, on them in class. Have a good day.